today, I think the sequence of the papers has been great because first Ramon introduced the concept of digital equity and then uh, uh, we had heard an experience about the telecenters in Sri Lanka and now we are going to address the issue of how government can have an incidence not direct towards the digital equity but uh, indirectly. The thing is in Costa Rica, we used to have lots of telecensors also. The idea of telecensors was very keen to our government. And we have invested a lot of money into telecensors, but the technology has proven them to be a little bit obsolete, at least in our, in, in our country. So now we are trying to address the issue of what about charging for mobile internet? Does the charging of that type of service has an incidence into the digi digital equity or not, because now we are thinking that government doesn't have to provide everything, but many people will be able to access internet through, through uh, their mobile phones. And so the, the way it's being charged will make people be able to use or not to use the system. So our, our concern, uh, in fact, uh, Alexander is working his PhD dissertation on that, is how to understand what's going on in this country. We have had two years discussion uh, in newspapers and in several uh, forums of how to charge for those mobile internet services. Uh, so far, we uh, have been using a type of charging system where you pay for a fixed amount and you have a sort of velocity established, and so you can use whatever you want of uh, internet in your mobile phone. But they are, I, I, they are proposing, the companies are proposing to change that type of charging system towards a charging system based on whatever you use the system, just based on the download kilobyte. So we want to think or try to understand what will be the impact of that change before the change happens or to stop the change if we can in terms of a, the service access to the poor sectors the exclusion of sectors, especially in rural areas, which is the concern also of the telecenters, the impact on digital, digital device, and the impact on universalization of the access of service. So to do that, we used our method methodology, which is called Ad Advocacy Coalition Framework. And it was developed by Savatier and Jenkins in the 1990s. And this methodology helps to try to explain how public policy changes, what drives the change, and how it's produced. So uh, uh, it's based on trying to understand the role of ideas, beliefs, values, and the ideology of a country and the actors in the country and their strengths to try to move one, one policy through the political system. Uh, the policy subsystem is simply the, the, all of the set of actors which interact with a particular policy issue and with a particular setting of decision making. Uh, this framework in, in, really tries to understand what's going on in, in a policy setting, trying to define three different levels. And one is called the deep core, which establishes a, all the chair actions of actors. For example, in, in this country, for example, freedom is very important, universal equity is very important, liberty are very important. So those are ingrained uh, beliefs of the one country or one society. Those very seldom change. It's very hard to change those 
values. Then it, it comes the policy core, uh, which comprises of the beliefs shared by the actors regarding a specific topic or an issue of public policy. For example, uh, one idea would be that all Costa Ricans share the belief that a technology should be a service for everybody. Uh, and the third level is the secondary aspects which refer to the technical or instrumental part of the implementation of the policy. We will be more concerned trying to explain the policy core, but I, I want to tell you that the deep core is probably the most important a set of beliefs to understand a society. In, in Costa Rica, since, I don't know, many, many, many years ago, we have very, very strong beliefs on equity, on democracy, on being able to give the same rights to everybody. So that's the deep core that's going around the discussion because, as you will see later, there are some trends of the globalized world that uh, instruct us to charge for services in a way that's economically feasible for the companies, not necessarily for the belief of a country. Okay, just so you will understand a little bit of the Costa Rican context, before uh, 2007, we only had one company that provide telecommunication services in this country. It was called Costa Rican Electricity in Institute, ISE. In fact, ISE is the owner of Colby, which gave you those, all those things, and it's down there. Uh, ISE was a public health monopoly, which had the belief that it had to provide services to all population of the country even though there are far away uh, places, and in a small country, this is not so far away, but reaching to the rural areas is very expensive in any country, no matter how big or small it is. So for, for ISE, it was very important to up, go and reach all the population in Costa Rica, so you could go and find a small house in the end of, of, the, of the country that it will have electricity, because they provided electricity, but they, it will also have telephone lines, which is very hard to find in other countries. He, so what they did is the service they provided was more or less expensive to all of us because we supported the people that couldn't pay for the service. So, uh, uh, and it, it, it worked more or less okay, uh, but we Costa Ricans really complained that it was not very efficient, that the, that the lines in the system were very long, that the uh, ESE was not performing with the high technology we had. So there was a lot of pressure in the country to open to the globalized world. So in, in we signed the free trade agreement at one point, and by it, we opened the te telecommunication market. Many people were really, really expecting big companies to come and have more efficient services, but also the government was very, very concerned about the impacts of that. So they spent a lot of years from, from two, 2008 to, to 2011 trying to create a po political a system based on laws so that a, the concept of providing service to everybody will be supported in some way. So they produced two laws that try to guarantee that this system that uh, allowed all Costa Ricans to have the service will be preserved, even though we had foreign co companies coming here. So by in 2011, uh, Claro and Movistar, you will probably know them, uh, began operating and started competing against EASY. Uh, this caused uh, a lot of uh, growth 
in the, in, in the cell phone lines and in everything. So uh, we had a big increment, 58% uh, increment in two years is really, really big. Uh, we start having new cell lines, uh, easier, easier access to smartphones because those companies even give it for almost for free. Uh, we also had the system of unlimited ban because it was uh, asked by the government. The government policy stated that all the tele telecommunications companies should provide the same type of a model to, to provide service. And the thing is, it starts growing and growing and growing, and everybody in Costa Rica uses the phones, and everybody in Costa Rica starts having smartphones. And for example, the, the, the lady that cleans my house has a smartphone, and we communicate sh through a WhatsApp. So, so people in Costa Rica are starting to use s smartphones very, very, very uh, frequently. But what happened with that? It seems that everything is okay and everything is good, but the problem is that the network got saturated. So the service was starting to be very, very slow, and there's limited infrastructure because now we have so many companies and there's no more space for all the, the, the things to put the, the, the lines and the services. So uh, one company is fighting against another company because he wants that space to be its space. And uh, also uh, we have limited radio electric spectrum and that's governed by the government, but they don't know exactly how to divide it and how to uh, give it to the companies. And from the user's experience, we have problems in access service. Many times if you're well, if you call me and I'm inside my house, I cannot re he receive the call because it, the, the, the signal is so weak. It, it's limited coverage, so if you go to one place, probably one company is better than the other company, and so uh, you start yeah, with your smartphone looking, looking like this to have service. Uh, so we have poor quality, we have very little speed, real speed. And we have lots of retransmissions and everything. So by, by that time, what happened is things were not getting okay. So the company started pushing government to change the, the way of charging for the service. Uh, they said that it was better to take the model. We have two types of charging system. There are a prepaid pl plan where you can buy like sort uh, amount of usage uh, and pay beforehand. So, uh, but that's based on the download. If you pay the postpaid plans, what you do is you, you pay for speed and be able to download everything. So what they propose is in order to reduce the saturation of the network, we should pass uh, the postpaid plans to from limited downloading to uh, pay by the amount of da downloaded bytes. Uh, what we did for this specific research was trying to understand who was pushing what type of a uh, tariff model and trying to understand why and what were the per perceived impacts of those that change over the time. So we interviewed, well, he interviewed, that's why I'm finishing here and allowing him to explain what he did. We interviewed the Minister of Science and Technology. You will get to meet him in the inauguration. We interviewed a, a member of the ESE. We interviewed a in the private sector to the vice presidency of the Chamber of Information Telecommunication Technology, which joins all the, the, the companies that uh, work in TICs, ICTs. And then we interviewed two people from, from the academy. 
he didn't interview me because I'm in the research, but he, he interviewed the, the director of the informatics center, of the, the center that provides all the services to the university, and he interviewed the director of a program, specific program, this called Information Society Program for the University of Costa Rica. So I finished here, and he will explain what he found out. Thank you very much, Gabriela. <clears throat> well, as a part of the analysis of the advocacy coalition framework, uh, it's required to do this interview in order to know which is the belief, the ideology, ideas that the actors have regarding to this issue. So in order to, to know this exposition, we did an interview, a personal interview that consists basically in 11 questions distributed in different, in different topics. Basically, we know to, new, uh, to know, sorry, what is the, the main purpose to promote this, this change in the tariff model. So we analyze, for example, the economic and social factors, the technical factors, and political factors. Also, as a part, we try to understand which is the sector that will be impacted with this, with this change, with this proposed change, and also which is the main um, the main focus or the main advice that we can get in order to enrich the discussion and not to create social exclusion with this proposal. So we identify basically uh, two different actors or policy subsystem. In the policy subsystem, we identify two different uh, actors. Basically, the actor that support this this change that is integrated basically by the government, but the position in the government is divided because some public institutions support this change while uh, other institutions not. Also, the operators obviously is supporting this, this change because they say that they need to, uh, to receive more income in order to do most investment in telecommunications sector. On the other side, we have the groups that opposite or reject this proposal for some of the reasons that Gabriela explained, and this sector are, are basically uh, composed by the private sector and academic sector. So the following slide, slide we, we present basically what is the main point of this group's defense. In the, in the one side we have the, the policy core one that is integrated by the Minister of Science and Technology, the Superintendent of Telecommunications and Operators, that basically they defend a technical position. They say that it's required this change because they need to invest more in, in telecommunications. And basically, the, the, the main point is the saturation of the cellular network. They also say that this saturation network is caused by the 5% of the postpaid users that have an abused use of this network. So they are, con they are causing congestion and impacting other uses, basically uh, causing a denial of service. As I said, it's necessary, they said, uh, to, to change the tariff model in order to receive uh, a more income and homologate the local market with the prepaid, uh, with prepaid uh, planes. So basically, in the main point that, that they defend analyzing uh, since the advocacy coalition framework is that they try to apply or to implement in our country a uh, model that is based basically in paper use. They say that it's a model, the, this model is applied internationally, but we have a big problem here because as Gabriela said, in Costa Rica, one of the main uh, deep core that we have is this solidarity, equity. So we, we believe that all these services must be accessed by all the people, not only for the people that can to pay for this. For this reason, the policy core two that is integrated for the Costa Rica Congress, ombuds, ombudsman office, consumer organizations, business association, and academic sector, they reject this plan. Why? Because they say that this plan, as it state, basically excludes 20% 20, uh, 20 of the Costa Rica population that represent almost 1,170,000 people. So we are talking about a wide range of people that, that are spread basically in the rural areas. And in the rural areas, we have the problem that not many ADSL lines is provided. 
Why? Because we need, we have some gaps in the infrastructure. So we are talking basically that we have some, some services that can be provided for some people that can pay for this, and all these other people that can pay for these services, or simply that don't have access to the ADC lines of this service, they going to be excluded. Other topic that is important to understand here is that the people, in, especially in rural zones, they have as a, as a smartphone, as a only device, the only device that they can access to the internet. So if you think that they don't have access to the ADSL lines, probably uh, implement hotspot could be very difficult because they don't have access to these connections. And also, we inc uh, you increase the roof or, or the price of the access of these services, basically we are promoting social exclusion, digital divides, with the current problem that we have included here in the metropolitan area, that is poor coverage, quality, and speed. As Gabriela said, it's very common that people here in, the, in San Jose, for example, has the, um, the smartphone and try to, to find the signal. The main difference, for example, that the people try to choose an operator, not is necessarily the speed. The main difference is why of them or who of them can provide a better coverage. This is the reason that why, for example, Gabriela explained now that in Costa Rica we have uh, a growth of approximately 38% in the subscriber lines that represent almost 151 penetration of these services. But it's very common to find people that have three lines, for example, two postpaid lines or, or three prepaid lines one, with one postpaid lines. In order to understand what is the position of this sector, we basically do a categorization of the main points that they cover regarding to the discussion. One of them is the infrastructure. It's very common to find several uh, positions from different groups that say that the main problem that we have is that basically radio spectrum is, is limited. Yeah, they are right. But the main problem is that the network infrastructure that we have is insufficient. It's not enough in order to provide all this traffic that we are trying, that, that we are creating with the mobile internet services. The other is the point that, that we are defending that the less supply of the ADSL lines. So we can think that the main problem of the saturation of the mobile network is that we have a poor fixed lines or fixed, fixed networks that can provide the speed or doesn't adjust to the necessities of the customers. So as a solution, for example, uh, the interviewers say that it's necessary, for example, to create cellular aberration rings. This is uh, basically to create rings with better capacity, with fiber capacity, according not only to receive the signals or the traffic that it received but the antennas, that is also required to pass all this traffic in a fast time to the other users with other antennas, etc. Also necessary to do a, a more investment in ADSL lines. In Costa Rica, it's very common to find, for example, in rural areas, electricity services. And uh, sometimes, sometimes, internet connections, but these connections are provided with a very low, low speed. So the problem here is that if we want to involve this sector to the digital economy, to the digital society, it's necessary to provide not only the access to these services, it's necessary to provide a good, very, a good access to these services for to resolve or for to resolve their problems or to involve this technology in the solutions of their, of their local problems. Another topic is, okay, sorry. <laughs> another topic is the implementation of the fair use policy and migrates to another better technologies like 4G and LTE. Other point is basically uh, to go forward in the efforts to liberali liberalize the local market. In Costa Rica we have several providers of the internet, but basically the, the rate that is based uh, on the market. It is, um, it is established by the Superintendencia of Telecommunications. Another topic is the social implication that is the main focus of our investigation, our research, sorry, that according with the Minister of Education Public, did its school affect 1,547 uh, public schools 
that are spread in all the country. Basically, we are talking uh, to exclude all these people that only have assets with uh, data cards, and they and the minister basically pays for um, buy these services using uh, postpaid planes. This is the main focus of our research because many groups say that the postpaid planes can be paid for the people that have uh, a high income, but this is kind of services is used to provide education, social programs, etc., for these people in rural areas. Okay, so as a solution, for example, is included to generate alternative tariff models that fits to the needs of the users or the sum of the sectors, and not to provide just one rate that could be applied to everybody. Other topic is to the role of government is necessary to the government participate in more, more actively in the discussion and in to provide infrastructure, digital literacy, and development of uh, mobile applications. As a conclusion, basically, we found that the proposed postpaid model doesn't contribute to the universalization access of, of internet. The main effect that it has is that it restricts the access creates social exclusion that is uh, that not is good, generate digital divide or maintain the genital divide against the poor sectors, the more vulnerable sectors, and endanger the goal of the universal services access. In other words, it doesn't resolve the saturation problem that some that the policy core main groups try to try, try to promote. So the recommendation is basically to go forward into the competition and liberalization of the sector. That means that liberalize the radio spectrum, more participation, more actors participating in the market, uh, they regulate the sector, uh, establish connectivity plans based on customer needs, and uh, investment in network infrastructure, fixes on mobile, and finally, develop clear policies, policies in this area. So the main challenge that we have now is to discuss or to, or to decide. We have, we want social exclusion, digital divide, or we want solidarity, equity, a digital economy. What is the kind of society that we want to, to build? Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much, Gabriela. And